Discord. Do this. Hide this. Bring this back. Okay. So, any questions about last week where we talked about hypothesis testing? Yes, I know the cat. <laughs> yes, he, he sits right here. And sometimes he sits right on the computer, so like it starts going crazy. <laughs> it's annoying. Um, so last week we talked about hypothesis testing where we had a single value and we were comparing that. Today we are looking at two sets of samples and looking to see if they are the same. Um, you're going to do the, if you're doing the, uh, you need to do the final, this is one of the projects parts of it, where you are going to take one of the columns and um, look to see if high-income countries and low-income countries are the same, or if one is bigger than that. Um, energy consumption, you think countries uh, consume more energy or produce more carbon dioxide. Those are all things that this does. It takes two samples and compares. Um, so it's fairly similar to um, the regular hypothesis tests. Um, a general question, what's the difference between significance level and confidence level? Um, so the confidence level is um, when we do a confidence interval, we tell you, say it's 90% confident. The significance level is the remainder. So the significance would be 10%. So that's it, it has to do with when we're doing the, um, uh, the hypothesis test, we have the alpha. The alpha is the error that's left over from the confidence levels. Um, and we use, so they're, they're together, they add up to one is basically uh, the, the Deal. So the confidence would be uh, level would be the stuff in the middle. The significance level, um, and um, talk usually about ninety five percent confidence and five percent significance. Um, and those are just general. And you'll notice, and sometimes they just stop doing. They drop the uh, level of significance and they just say level out. <laughs> you know, the level. Uh, and if they don't say anything, then it's still five that's just the assumed uh, value because that's true to standard deviations. Um, that's kind of how that works. Uh, so the tests that we're going to use are two sample. We have the two sample Z, the two sample T, and the two proportion Z. Uh, thanks. OK. Um, and so the difference is the fact that we have Last week, we talked about z-test and t-test, and one proportion z-test, because we only had one proportion we were working with. This week, we have two, so that's why we have the two samples, OK? Um, and that's going to be the difference into which you're going to use, is whether or not you have one sample or uh, that you're looking for. Um, and the same pieces still apply if I, the, if I know the population standard deviation. If I don't, then I'm going to use the t-test. So in most things in real life, you because we have the population standard deviation. And so here, if we look at the first question, as a student at a four-year college claims that the average enrollment is higher than at two-year colleges, uh, they do two surveys. They do 35 two-year colleges with an average enrollment of 5,069 and a standard deviation of 4,776. And then they look at 35 four-year colleges with an average enrollment of 5,316 and a standard deviation of 8,151. So the population standard deviations, those are sample standard deviations. And so we need to know all of those pieces. The um, Hypothesis test that you have is 
have to do they can so they'll either uh, mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero or mu1 is equal to mu2 and so that would be your null hypothesis one and this could be greater than less than or you know greater than or equal to less than or equal to um, equals and but those are the same ideas because if I have these two things are the same if I subtract them I get zero so you might see it as this you might see it as this uh, I think you have a bad connection keep cutting out Um, I wonder if I can change my setting. I'll just use the here. Um, is that better? I think the heads of I'm using the microphone and the computer. Getting a lot of feedback. A lot of feedback. Weird. Um, better. Hmm. I took the headset off because I thought that one might, might have been a problem. I'm not, there's no. My end. You Are other people getting feedback? What is this? I want to leave and come right back and see if that helps. That sounds fine to you. Um, John, it could be on your. It could be on my end. Okay. Because other people are saying it sounds good, so um, we'll try it and see what happens. <laughs> okay. It could be on my end, but I I don't see a reason why I should be giving feedback. Cause like there's nothing on my end to create feedback. I turn my volume down and it's better. Okay. All right. So our null hypothesis has to do with the fact that these two things are going to be equal and so last week, uh, mu uh, was equal to the set. Well, now we're this mean population mean, whatever it might be, is equal to the other population mean. And so they that's why we still have the equal sign. And then here we're subtracting them. So you might see this one or this one, and it's just how they want to write the problem each time. Um, and so here they're saying, I can't see you, Professor. I'm not screen sharing. That's right, because I popped off. Um, you know, can't see me. Either. All right, share video. I had changed it back to camera, that's why. Uh, and then, of course, I turned the camera off. <laughs> All right, that's better. I can see my screen. So um, you'll see either, you know, 1 minus M2 or M1 is equal to M2. And so either one will be the mean, or obviously proportions will have P1, P2, P1. There's a few other pieces that we have to go through, um, but we'll get to them when we actually start solving them. And, and you know, uh, they talk about pooled uh, standard deviation. 
And that just basically means that we think the standard deviations are the same. Um, and other, which is a much easier math than if we think that they're so that's why we assume that they're the same unless they tell us otherwise. Um, so in here we have that uh, are we looking to see the um, he thinks that the average enrollment of four-year colleges is higher than at two-year colleges so um, uh, that means that he thinks that the um, two-year colleges are less of course, the interesting thing is they wrote this backwards uh, then, and so here's our, our hypothesis, alternative hypothesis is four -year colleges are higher than two. -year colleges. So they changed it around in the problem, and you might see that. Okay, just we have to then, because we see this as four year is higher than two, greater than two year, that's an alternative hypothesis. But notice they don't have four year on this side. <laughs> so we have then turn our minds around and see, well, which way are they writing? Okay, and they wrote it as the two years is going to come for us. So two years are less than four years. And that's why that the null would be that two-year colleges are greater than or equal to four-year colleges because we're looking to, we're looking to uh, see if we have proof of this, the alternative, and, you know, that's not what they're asking. So that they did, uh, because we have two means, we could put one on either side, and it doesn't matter. Uh, we just have to make sure that the thoughts are the same. Um, and it's it's one of those little tricks that they like to play on people. Is write one thing down and they switch it to the other. Um, uh, look at this. They're asking, well, what does it mean to subtract two means? Well, it just means that we can subtract two means. Uh, the mean of x2 minus the mean of x you know, four years represents that we can subtract those two things. Minus the difference between two years and four years. So uh, and because it and the difference between these two is that this says the difference of the averages, whereas this says the difference of the enrollments. And notice we're taking the So you got to make sure it talks about differences, which is subtract average. Or when you do the proportions, it'll be difference of proportions. So you have to make sure that those things are talked about. Um, this here I'm going to skip over because it's a complicated formula to calculate the uh, degrees of freedom. And notice that it's not a whole number anymore. Um, so it will give us that value. Um, and but it still has to be in the sub. And there's a formula for calculating the Z, the, the Z standard deviation. You know, it's a lot involved in those things. We, we, we let the calculator do this for us. Because like I said, this is ugly. It has to do with standard deviations and square roots and squaring and averages and all kinds of stuff. Um, nobody wants to. So we'll let the calculator do all that math for us. Then we'll get back to it. What is the test of this? Okay, well, I guess I was actually coming here. So we're going to go to our calculators. Because we know that this is a T distribution, we have two samples. We have two samples. And we have statistics. We've got to make sure that we put these in the right order. So that's where writing it down becomes very helpful. Um, so let me clear this off. And so I have um, my x bar of Two year by uh, standard deviation of two year and my sample size of two year. And so they tell us that there are 35 two year colleges. They had a mean 
enrollment of 5,059 and a standard deviation of 47.76. And then I had colleges. was 53.16. Like how I turned that three into a five very quickly. Uh, my standard deviation is 8,000 something, 81.51. And my N, of four year colleges is again 35. Okay. So I can go to my calculator. And because we're in our hypothesis, we have the two year colleges going. We want to make sure that that is what we put in first. So we want to put in that information with the two year colleges first and then the four year college. So 5,069, 47, Now, when we do the, if we do the Z test, the standard deviation comes first. So you got to make sure you put them in the right, the standard deviations come first. So you got to make sure you put them in the right order. Um, it just, again, it's weird setup that a calculator does, but it's hey, but, that uh, way in all. Yes. Professor, uh, where in the calculator do you get the sample t test part? Because I wasn't here last week. I didn't write it. Okay. I didn't watch it yet. Okay. So in the stat test, you have your z tests and t tests. Yep. So we're doing number four, the two sample t test. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And so put in our data. I mean, we put in our statistics. We don't put in our data. Our data, is meaning we actually have data listed. Uh, so here we have our means for the second part, which are the four-year colleges, 5315, 8151, and 35. And we're not done yet. Again, we have to put in what is our alternative hypothesis. Well, our alternative hypothesis is that it's less than. That's nice. We already have less than uh, selected. If you don't, over highlight over it, hit enter, and it will select it. Now, the next one asks us if it's pooled. And unless they tell you it's pooled, you say no. It's like drugs. Just say no. All right. Um, like I said, it's, it's only because the math is harder with pooled. Um, we just agree. Uh, that's assuming that they are different. Since we know nothing about, them, we can assume that they um, are the same. So we are going to always know, and then we're going to calculate. Right. And so that gives us here null hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis that x, uh, that the mean of the two-year colleges is less than the mean of the, the four-year colleges. Here's our t statistic. Here is our p-value, the probability of n, if those are the if the null hypothesis is the same. Here is our different degrees of freedom. Okay, so it calculates it out for us. So that's nice. We can come back here and depart that we skipped and type it in. P. Remember the freedom are in. Subscript, and then we just type in two decimal places, so 54.88. And if, like I said, because if we don't do that, we'll mark it wrong. So if you don't 
uh, with a subscript, it marks it wrong. It's one of those stupid things that computers, they didn't put, didn't put it into the computers, so did the answer, so it says it's wrong. So if you have to do it on a test, make sure you use the subscript tool. Okay, so here, what are we? What is the test statistic? Well, it's a T statistic because we have a T test, and here is our negative 0.15. Okay, you don't put zero in, it will assume the zeros in there, but you need to put the negative in. If you don't put the negative in, get it wrong. If we had turned this around by accident, if we had put those in the wrong or um, uh, done that x that, that the mean of the first one is greater than the mean, we would have gotten the opposite value. The value here, we would have gotten the, the same test statistic. We, we would have gotten a different test statistic. We're subtracting in the opposite, and we would have gotten a different p-value. Uh, and then, what is the what does it mean? This value here. Okay, we'll have to make sure we look carefully on the portion because we're going to have lots of p's. Uh, and remember, this p-value, the probability of getting these two means, the null hypothesis is true, and so it's very likely to get you know means of um, 5,069 and 5,368. Uh, the mean of the, the average of fewer colleges is less than the average of, you know, is here the mean of this is greater than the mean. That's probably very possible to happen. We are, we're not discounting that this could be true. We don't know it. We had, didn't prove it. We can't prove that it's true. Um, we can only prove that it, it probably isn't true. Um, but we're not throwing this out. We're saying, well, this is a fairly possible option because it's a 43% chance of that, of getting those numbers, even if this was true. What do we do? I want you to sketch a picture. It doesn't grade it. I don't grade it. I don't care what picture you put up there. Just put a picture up. You find a picture on the end that makes you happy, and no one will ever notice it. Um, I had a teacher, a, a student who pictures of puppies because it made her smile. You go. So this is my, I always think of this as my puppy button. And, you know, you put whatever you want there to make yourself happy. And we'll upload a file and nobody will ever look at it. And what was alpha? Well, alpha was given to us at this point, at this 5% level. That's all the alpha is. So I put the 5% there. What are we going to do? Well, remember, we have to look to see, is our p-value less than alpha? Well, 0.43 is not less than 0.05. So since the p-value is greater, we don't reject the null hypothesis. And our conclusion is there isn't enough evidence to show uh, that the average of two-year colleges is less than the average of four-year colleges. And uh, we determine which one to use. Well, we know the population. That's really all we care about in the population standard deviation. If that's the we need to have that. If we know this population standard deviation, then normal distribution. So that's the big difference between the two. Um, do we know population standard deviation or not? Uh, this is the exact same. So I'm going to let you guys uh, that practice. You just have to keep track of which thing is which. Um, and so respectively just means that this one goes with the first one, this one goes with the second. So, uh, and you have to, again, know which one is which because they switch them around. Right, they talk about um, electrical engineering and then multiple uh, mechanical engineering and then down here they have mechanical and then electrical. You want to make sure that you know which one is which um, and they're going to keep them in that order so you need to make sure you have information but doing the math is going to be excuse me, the same 
process. And again, with the T distribution, wait till you get the degrees of freedom from doing T at the T test and plug it in. So number three, they ask you the whole problem, but only care about the solution. What is the conclusion? Which really is really how the world works. We don't care how you solve. We just care. So, what is, you know, is there a difference between the day and the night students? And so, um, and you know, the day subs they don't even have all that information. They just are asking. What is, uh, is, is there, this is a t-test because we don't know the population standard deviations. We only know the standard deviations. So they've given us a mean. They've given us a sample standard deviation. They've given us a sample size. They've given us a sample size. They've given us a sample mean. And they've given us a sample standard deviation. And they want to know, did the day students, um, Oh, she thinks that there's no difference. So that there's no difference means that she thinks they're equal. And so we're testing that they're equal and not equal. We don't care whether one is higher than the other. We just think that we want to make sure that they're the same. What we're going to look at is, you know, is this one the same as this one statistically with the sample sizes and sample standard deviations that we have? It's either going to be yes. Or no, there is, there's enough evidence to conclude that they're different, or there isn't enough evidence to conclude that they're different. And you have to do tests to find that out. Um, this one here is a Z test. I know that I knew those um, because they tell us what the population standard deviations are, even though they tell us. Uh, what the sample standard deviations are for each uh, sample that is an important. They tell us that the population standard deviations are six and three. So they tell us what the, Z, what the population standard deviations are. That means we have to do a Z test. And I'll show you um, what it's going to look like. So again, we go to test, we come down to two sample Z tests. And notice it puts the standard deviations first, and then the mean and sample size, and then the mean and sample size. So we have those pieces of information first. And so we come and write them down. So we have uh, eraser mode. We have the um, sample of hybrid, the mean of the gas, standard deviation of the high, standard deviation, gas, sample size of the sample size. Um, non hybrid cars have low average miles per gallon. Okay, great. Um, 21 cars and get a mean of 31 miles per gallon. And it tells the, pop the sample standard deviation, but we don't care. All right. 31 gas cars. At a mean of 22 miles a gallon. And again, we don't care what the standard deviation was because what we care about is that they told us that um, 
the end deviations are six and three respectively. So hybrid cars came first, so that's a six. And gas cars came next, so that's a three. So we have this. Okay, we can now figure. We now have to figure out well which way do we want this to. Go. The gas cars have a hybrid. Gas cars have a lower mean than hybrid. Okay, well, this is, has hybrid going. So that means, again, we have to flip it around. That hybrid is greater than gas. Hybrids have a higher mean than gas uh, cars. So we have to make sure the hybrids go first. So this is going to be our X1. This is going to be our X2. We put them in. So mean, we have. Well, this is six. This one's and a sample size of 21, a sample mean of 22, and a sample size of 31. What well, is our null hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis? That hybrid is greater. So we have to make sure we have hybrid is greater. We highlight them when we need. And notice this doesn't ask us about pooled, okay? Because that only if, only works with the um, Z the, the t test because we're looking to see do we think that the the standard deviations are the same or not, okay? And we have to make that decision. And we almost always say that they're not because we don't know um, if the population we'll never know what the population standard deviations are. So we can just assume that they're probably not the same. So then we calculate this but here because we know the population standard deviations we don't have to worry about whether they're the same or not we calculate we get our z statistic we get our p value now notice this says 1.0 well, remember p values have to be less than one so this we look over here this has e to the negative 10 that means this decimal place is there's nine zeros and then a one it's zero point Zero 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 one. Right, that's pretty close to zero. Right? So that means that we have, th if this was true, if the null hypothesis was true, we have almost a zero percent chance of getting these values in these average means. Okay, if the population, if these uh, hypothesis, null hypothesis was true, so we can. Pretty much guarantee that the analysis is false. Um, okay, those numbers are fine. All right. So C asks us, what is our, what does it mean to subtract the means? D asks us for the uh, distribution. Now this one is a pain in the bottom. Yes, I said a pain in the bottom. Okay. Because because it's normally distributed, it's going to have a mean of zero because what it's saying is that we are subtract. If we subtract these two things, we're saying that they're equal, so we will get a mean of zero when we subtract it. If we were to subtract the differences, what would happen? We would get a mean of zero because we're testing that they're the same. Then asks about the standard deviation. So to calculate that. Square root of sigma squared hybrid over uh, n of hybrid plus sigma squared of gas over the n of gas. Let me erase it because that looks god awful. Try it again. So I have the square root of, of course, I, um, yeah, I need those numbers.
squared over plus three squared over 31. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit this. So second quit, second mode brings the quit and just clears everything off. So I have the square root six squared divided by 21 plus three squared divided by 31. And that gives me my value that I'm looking for. Okay, so the nice thing is we don't have to worry, like we can just write this down just the way it is. Um, we don't have to deal with any work because it's gonna do the squaring first, then do the division, then do the squaring first, then do the division, then add the fractions, then take the square root of it. So that's what this tells it to do. So we don't have to do this in little bitty steps. Um, we have all, we write this as a single equation in the math and it will give us that, it'll give us that number because does it in order of operations, so it has to do the inside the square root first. So and then it squares those numbers, takes the divisions, then adds them, then takes the square root. So that's exactly what we want it to do. So we don't have we can just write it the way that it in the, the um, um that's written here. And so for those of you who have the older one, you're just gonna have a parenthesis in there. It's gonna say square root parenthesis, and so you don't you just the same thing, it'll still do the same math. Um, but that's how we get that combined square root that it's looking for. It asks us, well, what was our Z statistic? What was our test? So we had a Z test. This was the statistic. What was the P value? And they only want the first four decimal places. Well, the first nine are all zero. So the first four are also zero. And then what does that mean? Well, that means that if this null hypothesis was true, that hybrids is, are less than the gas guzzlers, less than or equal to the gas guzzlers, then there's a 0% chance of getting the numbers that we got. And so that's why we reject the null hypothesis. All right, they're asking us, well, because again, where is our, our, our null hypothesis is that it's greater? So when we look at the graph, there's only one that shows greater. So we don't have to worry about what the number is, but we can look to see, well, where is our null hypothesis? This isn't it, this is less, that's not equal to, that's not equal to, and this isn't even this isn't even correct because this would be the confidence level of that stuff. This is the only one that shows greater than, so that's why this one has to be the right answer. Kind of silly when they do these things. Um, the next one says, what was our alpha? What was 0.05? What are we going to do? We're going to reject because the p value is zero and the alpha 0.05, it's less than, so therefore we reject the hypothesis. And there's enough evidence to show hybrid cars do more gas cars. Make sense? How did we determine that? Well, because we the standard deviation is no. So in the t statistic, t test it's in the z-test, it's known, so that's why we use um, the z-test. Everybody see why we make the decisions we make? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, I'm going to go with yes because you're all... All right, okay, good. John gets it, everybody gets it. So that, that's that's how we look at it. John's happy. We're good. Okay. So this next one, we actually have data. And they're looking to see um they're looking to compare whether spouses are happy in how we separate things, uh raising the children. Okay. And a um they have some fun questions here uh one of the questions of the study of marital satisfaction of dual career couples is i'm pleased with the way we divide the responsibilities for child care okay 
where a one is really happy with that and a five is we're really not happy with how we uh, separate uh, divide child care um and so here's some questions okay and so one thing that we can do with these if they are paired and it talks about paired um just we're looking to see is there a difference between those things and so we don't actually look at it at paired t tests we have we don't actually have two separate things. The uh, sample t if they are independent of each other. In this case, the values are not independent of each other because we're pairing them, the husband and the wife, and we're how they see things. This is the same kind of thing as if we had a pre and post test. If you, you know, I, I'm because I'm sampling the same p, I should similar results or you know like we, we do something before we take a test before and you all do miserable i give you a, you know some learning i do a post test afterwards you should have learned something so your not your uh, second test should be higher than your first test okay um even if i don't do something your second test should be higher than your first test because at least you've seen information um, and especially if it's multiple choice, you know which ones are wrong. So you show those answers again. Although weirdly, when I students take quizzes in, at uh, high school over and over again, sometimes their grades go down. I don't understand how that happens. Um, but we're always looking to see, we're not always looking to see is it greater than zero. We can set this greater than to any number. Uh, if we wanted to see, did I get a 10 point increase? You know, I could test that. You know, if I, um, you know, if I give you a sleep aid, are you sleeping two hours more than you were, the, you know, normally? I could test that. You know, so it doesn't have to be zero. I can say I want it to show that it's greater than this amount. You know, um, if I give you, uh, if if we have a group, you know, and you were nothing, and now all of a sudden. We're doing something. You know, after weight, you know, did your weight go down by ten or fifty pounds or zero pounds? You know, like I can test that it, you actually lost some weight, or I can look and say, did you? You know, I we're looking and saying we want to see that be able to say the average person loses you, you lose on average ten pounds in ten weeks. We want to be able to say that. So that's what we actually test. They actually use that as a value and say, okay, well, here's the number we're going to test it. You know, did the, our groups lose 10, you know, more than 10 pounds? And then we can put that in our ad because if I say you'll lose weight, that's nice. But if I say you'll lose 50 pounds, that's better. People are more likely to listen to that. So they'll put a number and test it and see where the differences are and then use that as a, um, to show that this, statistically significant amount. Okay, so you'll see you know, on weight things you don't see zero pounds. You'll see you know lose ten pounds in ten weeks because they look they on average they lost more than ten pounds in ten weeks. So they don't want to have people lose less because and, but you can say well gee a single person could could lose less could you know, on our program, but on average, we lose you know ten pounds, and so you know you are a single person is an enough, and it's an average of fifty people. You're going to see weight loss, and so that's what we based our information on, um, and that's what this is. This is a difference. So we have to figure out which we are subtracting. So. Um, it says a table below in 10 pairs of husbands and wives conduct a hypothesis test at the 5% level to see if the mean difference in the husbands versus the wives direction is negative. So they want to know if we subtract, um, uh, women from the, husband, the, the husbands minus if that's going to be a negative value. I'm going to look in there, all right? I'm going to put data in. 
And I'm going to enter data. I'm going to clear out my lists. And so I'm going to put in one. Two, one, 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 two, four. Then I'm going to put in the, the Y. Three, three, two, three, two, one, one, two, four. Okay. So I have my husbands and wives. And now in list three, I want to subtract those two things. I want to find the differences between them. Okay. So I'm going to have up here in list three, I'm going to go up and then. But it's list two minus, sorry, list one minus list two. So second, list one minus second, list two. I'm going to hit it. It plugs those values in. List three is the that I'm actually going to test. Okay, because this has the differences between husbands and wives. When we do differences, we have to actually do the subtraction and find um, which thing we're looking for. And so, because we're interested in that, it, 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 it said, Professor, is it negative? Professor? Yes. I don't understand why you put husband score, the L1 um, wife score on L2. It's supposed to be on top of the first one, right? Uh, because they want to do the difference between husband. And wives, and they won't be negative. Oh, okay. If I did, I mean, I could, I could have put wives in L1 and husbands in L2, but I still have, then I have to remember subtracting L2 minus L1. For which okay. order I put in, I just have to make sure that I have wives from the. So if I put the husbands first and then the. Like my brain. If I put wives first and then husbands, I would have to go this column minus that column in my okay. Most two minus three, they wouldn't be like here and two here. They wouldn't go two minus three and put the answer here because that would it's like not in, it doesn't flow the way we read. So that's why I put husbands first. Okay, so you can see where. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you show me how you um, are able to multi, um, minus the numbers into column three? Yeah, so if you part. go up to the top, I'm going to clear this out again. So if I move up to the top, it says L3. Yep. I can do minus this two. And then I hit enter. It does the math. But weirdly, when I go back up there, it doesn't talk about how I got those numbers. It just shows me the numbers. Gotcha. So it doesn't like it. it so it, it doesn't keep time. that formula. So if I had changed a number, if I typed a number wrong in L2, and I'm like, oh, I got to change this from a. Um, this one wasn't supposed to be a uh, three. It was supposed. This wasn't supposed to be a two. It was supposed to be a three. And I hit enter. It doesn't change this because it doesn't keep that formula in there. So that's the only bad thing about um, the calculator versus if you're doing it in Excel or you know Google Sheets, it would keep the formula, and so then it would you know you you would if you made a change the value it would change the, the differences for you. In the calculator, it doesn't do that. It just goes it does instantly and then loses that information. It loses how it figured out this, how it figured out how that its numbers. So it's kind of a pain in that. But it's useful because I don't have to, I could do, yes, yes, I could just do the subtraction here in my head. I, two minus three is negative one, two mi uh, one minus three is negative two, one minus two is negative one, that's a zero, that's a negative two, that's a negative one, that's a zero, that's a zero, that's a zero, that's a zero. That's a zero. And if I look down through, yep, I got all that stuff. So I could have just inputted these things myself because there's only 10 of them, which is fine. But if you have hundreds of them, you don't want to do that. You want to have the computer take care of um, you know, doing the math as opposed to that way you can just focus on making sure you get the numbers in right. So because they wanted to see 
that the y that this thing was negative that tells us what our alternative hypothesis is and then because this is less than everything else has to be greater than or equal to the null has to have everything else so that's how we get those pieces and we test the mean this mean well it's just the of the husbands and wives, you know, whatever. What is our test? This, this one's an easy one because we degrees of freedom less than how many things there are. So we had 10. When we do two sample t tests, we it doesn't. So we have the calculator to do that fun, this, uh, information. But because this is an easy one. It's just a single value. We're only one set of statistics that we're looking at, then we can just subtract one from how many things there were. Next one asks us, well, what's the test statistic? So we're going to do that. All right, we go back to stat. We're going to go over to tests. This is a t test, a single t test. Even though, yes, we had two samples, we're paired. So they're really the same thing. We're looking at the Differences between those things, so that's why we just have a single t test. We don't have stats anymore, we have data. We select the data. And then we're at, it's asking us well, what is the value that we're testing zero? All right? Where is our information? Our information that we're testing is in list three. Even though this data in list one and list two. The numbers that we calculated with the differences we put in list three. So that's why that has to be list three. This is a frequency of one. And then our alternative hypothesis is less than. So make sure we highlight less than, hit enter. And then again, because it's a single t test, we don't have to worry about pooled uh, statistics. I'm uh, sorry, pooled standard deviations. So we just hit calculate. It gives us our t distribution. It gives our p-value, it gives it gives us our n. Figure out n mod. So it gives in um, and so here is our t statistic. So t statistic here's our p value 0 0.124 what are we going to do what is what does it mean it's the probability of getting these numbers here in list three if the null hypothesis was true what are we going to do with it what's our alpha oh sorry what's our graph well, we have less than so that's why it's that one what is the right what are we going to do? Are we going to reject or not reject? Well, because P is less than the alpha 0 0.05, which is the question. Uh, we hypothesis, which tells us this question. So, like I said, these two questions are backward. Um, and then it means that significant evidence that women are, are uh, uh, happy with uh, the division. Is taking people working. Of course, the husbands are happy with it. They come home, they work, they come home, they wait for their wives, and they're happy. Women, you know, there's the cleaning, the the cooking, the uh, homework, the stuff that we have. Why do we have a T distribution? Because we didn't know. Um, Uh, so we don't we don't know the population standard deviation, and the samples are dependent upon each other because we have two samples, but they're dependent. We have a t distribution because we we're looking to find the differences of that. We don't know the standard population standard deviations, but they are dependent upon each other. In all the other previous things, they've been independent. Like one thing had no effect on the other thing. This has effect.
So we get a shot. Well, yeah, but I don't know. Yes, but I don't have to give it to him for like a while because it's not. Until... He had it. He had it. At, I gave. I had one. But he is. He'll need one for this month. So. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay. So. Um. West Nile. Um. This is just asking you if you have proportions or uh, match pairs or means or a single means or two means. Um, and they're looking at, they, they tell you, well, it's, uh, we have, uh, they, they tell you all kinds of good stuff about West Nile virus. Um, Julix species of mosquito. Um, I'm not sure why anybody would care about that stuff. In particular, in 2010, there were 629 cases of West Nile virus out of 1,021 cases in a sample. And there were 486 neurovirus cases out of 712 cases in 2011. And they want to know, is the proportion of, uh, Nile, of West Nile cases more in 2010 than it was in 2011, in 2011 higher than 2010? Well, they tell you that it's before, and they tell you that there's two of them. So that makes this question pretty easy. We have two proportions. So we have to look at the thing that says we have two proportions. Sometimes they're... this one here, however, asks us to actually do. So um, um, I'm assuming this is uh, the. Her husband spent two and a half hours picking out speakers, and she was bored out of her. And she was wondering, do men really enjoy shopping for electronics more than women? And she surveyed the men and women that were there and said, "Okay, well, do you like this more than uh, who likes this?" And so we have proportions. So we have. The number of sixes is in men. Out of the number of men, the number of successes in female, out of the females. Okay. She said 67 and 25 said they, uh, they liked shop. So 25. Out of 67 and females out of 25. Right. So because this is the proportions, we're going to have the Z tests. Right? They're looking to see. Um, she's interested in, in, in is men greater than women? Okay, so to test that, the result the, the would be that men is less than or equal to women or females. Um, so those parts are straightforward. What does it mean to subtract proportions? We subtract it to do proportion. Now. Yeah, it seems kind of obvious sometimes. All right, so now the next thing is this one. And so this, because their proportions are going to be normally distributed. Because we're subtracting them and we're believing that they're the same, the mean is going to be zero. Now, this is the piece that work in solving for. Okay. So, remember when we had uh, portions for the Z test in, in last week, it was the square root of P times Q over N. Well, we now have two of them, so we can't use this. We have to make it bigger. It's still going to be um, a square root. And 
we have to get these things to be figure out you know how we have to figure out the p's and for everything and um put these pieces together and i'm going to just show you And it's not worth memory. So. Two samples. That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, there it is. Two proportions. I'm like, I, where's the word proportions? That was what I couldn't find. Okay. So this <laughs> is the values that we have to have. Uh, we have this P of C. Okay. So we have to combine these two proportions together. There you go. I'm so confused. Okay. To do this, we have to get the combined portion, right? That's notice here we have. So we have the P of C times the Q of C times one over um, and one one. And the combined proportion are when we take these proportions here. Here, we add these, and we add our trials up. So this is going to be, in our case, it'll be 25. Plus 8 over. 67 plus 25. So that gives me 33 over uh, 67, that's 2, 8 over 92. So this is our combined proportion. Then our Q is our our failure is going to be one minus this. So you know it's going to be thirty three minus. So it's whatever is left over here. So ninety two minus thirty three because remember this is all one. So um, we get. Uh, over 90. Okay, so the so, so this is our successes. This is one over 67 and one over 20. Crazy.
square root, 33, 59, times 1 over 67. Hey, professor, where are you uh, doing these numbers? Yes. Can't see it. Oh, my um, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Oh, oh, I just think your uh, calculator so, part is covered somewhere. I'm just, Also, I, I'm I, I've just I have just a so this is where these numbers. Um, so I had my successes over figure out the combined proportion. So how many successes out of how many total trials? The I multiply by the, the failures, so it's going to be whatever's left. I found 33 out of 92 people liked shop electronics, didn't like shopping for electronics. So that's my P and my Q. And then I have to multiply that by one over the first sample size plus one over the second sample size. So that's where this one over 67 plus one over 25 comes from. Make sure I'm sharing my application. Yeah, I'm sharing, I'm sharing my application. So, the, and then I take the square root of it. So it's this big ugly formula that I have to deal with. All right. And so on my calculator, I'm going to do this in parts. So I have, I'm going to do the stuff inside the square root first. So I have 33 divided by 92. 59 divided by 92 times, oops, times, and with parentheses, 1, 7, 1 over 25. And I'm going to close that parenthesis. This inside information. Okay. Then second square root. I get which is what we're going to be putting in here for our. We do all this to get this simple. Uh, you know where it's find the combined proportions. Multiply by the which will never use, but, you know, they will ask you for it. So, um, you know, if we were doing this by hand, we would need this number. We're not doing it by hand, we're going to do it in the calculator, but um, we need that to like. Like I said, it's only for using um, the if we're doing this by hand, but it gives an, an about what the distribution would look like. And here it's going to ask to do that. It's much easier. Two sample proportions. What is our X's and N's? What are our successes and what are our trial sizes? 
So I have 25 out of 67, and I have 8 out of 25. What is my no? What is my alternative hypothesis? Well, my alternative hypothesis was that men is greater than women. So greater. So I have all the ugly stuff. And notice I told remember there's lots of p's. So we have p one greater than p two. That's our alternative. Our z. Then we have our p value. Then we have the sample uh, population proportion for the first one, the sample proportion for the combined proportion, our sample sizes for each one of them. There's lots of P's to look at. The one we care about is the one right under the, we, we care about the P value is the one right under the Z score, okay, the, the Z statistic. These are the estimated proportions. So. What is our test statistic? 0.47. What is the p value? 0.3182. Okay, what does it mean? It's the probability getting these two sample portions if the null hypothesis was true. And here they tell you what portions are and stuff like that. Um, The next one is which graph is we're sorry, we're doing greater than, so it's gonna be the group. So it's the only one that has greater than these two are between. This is between this would be the not equal to, this is what's between, this is the only one that's greater than. And then what are we going to reject the null hypothesis? We're going to not reject the null hypothesis because this is bigger than alpha, which is 0.05. So we don't reject because the p-value is greater than alpha, and there's no sense to say that men like shopping for electronics more than women do. And then why did we do the thing we did? Because we have two proportions. So we use an oral distribution because proportions. Of course, always use an oral distribution. Um, number eight here, they they give you all this stuff, and we don't care about any of it because they tell us what the p value is and the alpha. All we care about is what is the conclusion? Are we going to reject or not reject? So you compare this to alpha. If it's less than, you reject. If it's greater than, you don't reject, and you are done. Number nine, again, is a difference. Okay, we have two things, and we're looking to see did their cholesterol go down, right? Um, and so they, this is their first one. This is this one. We're gonna find the difference. So we'll put. Um, we want to see that the significance were lowered. So we want to see is it negative. So I would put this in list one, and this in list two, and subtract them. Okay, because we want to see did it go down. So do we have a negative? Than zero. Okay, is our alternative less than zero? And we get that if this these numbers here are lower than those numbers there. So we put this in list one, this in list two, and then and then do the t test on list three, just like we did with the husbands. And then he, they're asking, what's the t? What is the distribution? Well. We have two things that are matched up, okay? Uh, and we want to know here's our sample, here's our sample standard deviations. But we had six subjects. So what's the distribution? Well, because it's pair test, we're going to have a simple standard degrees of freedom, one less than how many things there were. So six minus one is. So that's how they got that answer. There. So you have like three things to do. Um, you have a you have a paired p test. You have a um, proportion z test. 
think. Um, maybe you don't actually. I think I did that. We did that one. So I think you have a um, a, a paired t-test and a two-sample t-test, and I think that's it uh, to do. So um, there's we've done, I, and a bunch of them are, are like I said, are, are one question little things. You you have to do a t-test. They they ask you what is the uh, decision based upon all the information. Um, number three here, you're gonna do a um, t test. You know, the pieces out, you just have to find the conclusion. Are you going to reject? Um, and <laughs> so, like, I think there's one more way down the bottom here that that two sample that you. Um, so it gives you another option to do that. Remember, the test is due uh, for on chapters six by Monday. Um, are there any questions about how you decide which test to do? I mean, could you just like briefly explain that like one more time, maybe? Sure. All right. So um, between a, a two samples, are we saying it equal to a number, or are we checking to see are the samples are we testing two samples? So that's the first thing. How many samples do I have? Um, after that, are we dealing with means? Are we dealing with, if we're dealing with proportions, then we only two, we only have the two samples z test for proportions. If we have means, we have no. Get rid of that. So you two of them. Actually, that probably wasn't a bad idea. Um, when we go to tests, do we have portions or do we have um, means? If we have portions, we're going to use the one proportion, two portion Z test. So in chapter 10, obviously, we're going to do the two proportion Z test. In chapter 9, we'll be doing the proportion Z test. When we have um, means, we have to look to see do we know the population standard deviation or not? If we know the population standard deviation, we're going to use the z-test. And then it just portions. how many samples do we have? Do we have one sample, or do we have two? If we don't know the the, um, uh, uh, the population standard deviation, then we're going to do t-tests. So, we'll, And then we have, again have to look to see, do we have one sample or not? And if we have one sample, it's going to be just a simple t-test. If we have two samples, we have to look to see are they dependent upon each other? Like, is are we looking at one thing that has happened after something else has happened? If they are, we're going to find the differences and do a single t test. If they're independent of each other, then we're going to do the two sample t test. And I mean, I guess, but. You might, if you like, no, there's probably no population standard deviations for uh, paired tests that you might do a Z test on that. So, if we ever have paired, it's going to be a T test because you're going to have data that you're comparing um, and you're looking to see was there a change and how, by how much, usually, are the two things that we do. And they'll tell you they, we want to look to see did things go up or did they go down. And so that tells you they're usually going to give you the alternative hypothesis, and it's either going to be greater than zero or less than zero. Are usually the ways that they look at that. So if we want to see did your um, test score go up, well we're going to look to see we're going to take the differences and look to see is the difference greater than zero. Did your weight go down? We're going to take you. Uh, is it negative? You know, is the difference negative because your weight went down? 
or something we would care about. You know, um, and so though if they're their parity is going to be a single t test. Otherwise, if they're independent of each other, like when we had the um, the the, the enrollments at colleges, those are independent of each other. Those are t tests, and they're going to have two samples on that. Uh, do when we have you know most times when we have two samples, we're going to have a two sample uh, t test because unless they tell you that they are comparing these two things and it's the same people it's a, it's a it's a uh, that that's when we have a dependent values and that's when we are going to do the single one but those are the things we need to know do we know the population standardization or not do we have a proportion or not okay if we have proportions we're going to go to this and like i said if we have the um if we have proportions you know in the test they may you for the paired values. Uh, that's when you need to um, you know, uh, compare and find the combined proportions where you have the successes, find that proportion. Uh, one minute of that, which is, and then multiply it by, you know, one of, but then I, I don't think I, I tried to remove those kinds of questions because they're not as important as what what is the answer? What do you um, I think on any test I have that as a question because I don't find that as nearly as important as finding the conclusion. Do you reject or not reject? Well, you need to do all the well work. You need to plug in all the numbers into your calculator and find the p-value, and then just is that less than alpha? If it's less than alpha, you reject. If it's not less than alpha, you don't. Reject. And what does it mean? You know, well, the, you know, the p probability of getting the samples that you had if the null hypothesis is true. And it's always, you know. Um, and so those are the things that are far more important. Uh, what distribution do you use? Like I may have one for the t-tests because, like, example t-test, you have to still, the degrees of freedom aren't, you know, Once I have my information, I'm going to get my degrees of freedom. Okay, and it's not take one, th take how many things there are and subtract one. It doesn't work like that. It has, like I said, it has to do with um, standard deviations and square roots and all kinds of square, all kinds of other stuff. It's it's a uh, it's a big formula that nobody, I'm not even bother showing you because you're not going to do it. So you have to come up with, uh, with this will. I'll know you know. Put in the. Because that's important. That's an important thing to under. Would I? I wouldn't do. Professor, it's uh, it, I'm kind of following, yeah. but it's really, really difficult when your mic continuously goes in and out, and there's long periods of time where you can't actually oh, hear anything. But I'm, I'm kind of following it. It's just a little bit difficult to follow. I know. Let me go but back to I the headset because uh, somebody has something in the chat. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, did that already? All right. Uh, let me just test the uh, microphone. So, um, and I'm going to stop sharing. See, uh, show the camera. All right. So, um, is this better? Yeah. Okay. Um. So, yeah. So you need to just kind of look at um. Do we have 
uh, what kind of things are we asking to be you know, test for? You know, and do we know population standard deviations? Uh, that tells us whether or not we have a zero P test. And then from there, we're kind of just putting the information in the calculator and look really. The important things are what you do with that information. Um, no real statistic with a T statistical. Um, like this, all that stuff kind of, in the end, they don't, like if you were doing this in real life, we would look to see, is it going up? Is there a difference between? And then what does that mean? That would really, that's real the interpretation of that stuff for statistics law and inferential statistics. This is just kind of how do you get um, so this is just the mechanics, and there's not really a lot to it because you're just asking a calculator to give me. But it's your interpretation of what do those numbers mean, where the actual statistic happens, um, and uh, you know. But that, where the the true work is, is you know, once we have our values, explaining what they mean, and how do we, how are they going to use. The statistics. I have a hard time saying that word. You would think I would be able to say it better. Um, dealt with more than 30 years, but I can't. Um, it, it's. But those are the things. Talking. A few of the problems have the little, um, the little pieces that are. But they want to make sure that you, how to. That way, you can see that okay, we're losing along. But I think uh, it's it's, it's going it, to you do it a few times, and if you like, I said, if you need last week, if you need more practice, the textbook actually has more problems. Um, I know you can run those over and over again, but the textbook actually does have homework problems and they have the answers so um, you'll see the one no answer why did none of these say shit? okay I'll probably look in doing that a little bit more through the textbook right um, it just uh, well, if you the use that, I don't like chapter nine had all the answers. Um, somebody give me help here. Uh, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I think at some point I remember to do that. All right. Um, Answers. Like I said, chapter nine show um, problem and then had uh, oh, solutions. Okay. And chapter ten they broke it up so if you do the homework problems, they have these. And then if you click on the solution, uh, some of them are highlighted and it will give you. It has all the odd ones. You can. The odd problems and go. I can now see, find those answers. Whereas in chapter nine, oh, it's still okay. So here's the homework problems. And then if you click on them, they'll bring you to the solutions. So here's the solutions to those problems. So it shows how to solve, like all the little parts. It has answers to all its little parts. And in this case, it looks like it's the even ones. I don't know. Um, but so that gives you a lot more practice if you need it. Um, and it'll be so if you're like, oh, I kind of get this, but I want to like doing the same homework problem over and over again. You're um, do the math part, but you're not necessarily able to pull the information out. So do the um, other homework problem and see more problems and, and pulling information out versus uh, doing 
uh, the calculator part. So once you feel good with the calculator part, you may want to look at the the book and just go, oh, here's how, here's where the problems are, here's the information, I can set that up. You know, then you can go about and solve it and just did I solve it? You know, was I did I put the numbers in the right spaces to get the right solution? Is you know kind of a, a helpful thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody need an extension? I got one from. Uh, I know I got one in the. I didn't put in a request, uh, but I, know I talked to you um, a little bit ago. If I could. Right. If one that'd be great. Um, Waverly. I think I uh, let me just make sure Nick I did it. How's the leg? Uh, it's getting there. I had my uh, appointment yesterday. I still need like two more weeks off of work before I can go back. Uh, I start PT next week. Uh, so, um, Becca was very helpful. So, um, if if you would be kind enough to give both of us a slight uh, extension, that'd be that'd oh be sure. Great. Yep, um, and it was Robles. Uh, what do you, uh, Waverly? What chapter did you need an extension on? And I know. And so Nick and you and uh, Becca need uh, chapter nine. Yeah, it would be uh, chapter nine and okay. uh, the test probably. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, no problem. Uh, and Waverly. Okay. Uh, Waverly. Yes. Okay, so let me turn my camera. Great extension. So those are done. Chat. Uh, chat question if we add notes on the test can you see um all i think i see no place for me to even look at stuff uh, like extra work send me email but i don't think there's other for that see the like, partial work and stuff um let me done. And what's Rebecca's? There she is. Great extensions. Okay, so for uh, chapter eight and Test. Um. They both would be uh, chapter nine in the test because I think we both did chapter eight. Yeah, hey, that's 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 what I did. I, did. I, I said chapter eight, but I, I was actually clicking. Gotcha. <laughs> So I, I did the right thing. I was just I just said the wrong. I um well I see because I like it just brought up seven eight and test and ten so I was like I knew which ones it was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I just said the wrong one. I said eight then I looked at nine. So you guys are all set on those for uh, Thank extensions. You. Um, Thank you. Let me see. General question: Can you? See? Let me just look at the somebody test. Um. I note that for question number nine, I believe it was the end. Uh, 
Um, let me. Uh, I'll let you know. Um, scores. Uh, well, it says you got a hundred. See if there's any notes. Ebook additional no. Um, I get anything there. Let me just. Uh, right from my last submit. <laughs> uh, let me just look in the messages because I there's nothing in the test that shows me that you wrote a note. Let me. And is uh, the test for everything up to chapter eight or chapter nine? It's a uh, it's uh, six, seven, and eight. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Um, Sean, I'm getting yours. Uh, I did see. Yeah, so I didn't see anything in like, like, I know there's like an act your teach uh, thing, but I go to that so um, I'm not sure where it would have gone so I think it's really just that the notes may just be for you at that point I'm not sure because I don't see anything did as to um, see that uh, All right, Sean, your extensions are all set. Um, as just added my original note to ask your teacher, so you may see it now. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I got the ask your teacher question, so let me see if uh, there's the test. Uh, Um, definitely do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Well, do a um. A, if you do a confident on. Oh, it's both size. Uh, I have a bag. dropped way too many times um i will have to change that into the notes oh, of course uh, i unless there's any more questions no nope, we're good but not to be rude or anything, good. if you could right. try to work on the mic connection, that would be helpful because it's just a lot of in and out. Yeah, I will. I, will. I don't know like what's I up with that. I currently just didn't hear half of what you said. It's it's fine. It's just it's just challenging, you know. All right. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. I'm sorry. I don't know what's up with it, but I will give you guys the there is the. Um, I will have that up for you guys. Um, don't know what's up with the. Or I'll try another one next week.
It's all good. Thank you, Professor. I hope you have a good week. Bye-bye.